In a vehicle, the speakers are so close to our listening position, how could time alignment or the small differences in time delay possibly even matter? Can we prove the value of time alignment or time delay corrections with a simple test? So hold on, hold on, let's, let's rewind real quick. To get the best results when upgrading to an aftermarket car audio system, I oftentimes recommend a device called a DSP. The DSP or digital signal processor allows you to control many different aspects of your audio system. No speaker plays perfectly linearly, so you can adjust the equalizer of every channel to fine tune the performance of each speaker and correct the influence of the vehicle's environment on the sound. You can also set crossovers or filters in order to have each speaker or subwoofer in the system playing the range of frequencies that it was designed for. You can also adjust the level output of each speaker to compensate for being further from some speakers than others in your listening position. But another adjustment that we can control is time delay. So here's the deal. This is something I frequently talk about here on the channel, but I always get a little bit of skepticism. After all, when we're in a vehicle, the speakers are just so close to us, that small difference of being closer to one than another, there's no way that that could ever possibly matter, right? Coming up in this video, a quick breakdown of time alignment, a test, and more. Now, before we can install those aftermarket speakers into our vehicle, we need to know what sizes will fit, and for that, I always turn to our show sponsor, Crutchfield. On their site, you can enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle and easily determine exactly what you need for a car audio speaker upgrade. Better yet, for qualifying purchases, they often include the speaker adapters along with the different speaker wire harnesses that you potentially need to install the items into your vehicle. To learn more, check out Crutchfield at the links down in the video description where you can also potentially save on your next car audio purchase. So getting back into it here, what is time delay or time alignment? Those terms are kind of used interchangeably. What, what is it anyhow? Why do we even need to be concerned about it? So here's the deal. In air, sound typically travels about 1130 feet per second. While that is quite fast, it is slow enough that a small difference in the amount of path length between us and different speakers can impact the sound at our listening position. If you imagine us sitting in vehicle here, we need time alignment because we need the sound from each of the different speaker drivers in the vehicle to arrive at our listening position at the exact same time. The way this is done with time alignment or time delay is the speakers that are closer to us are actually delayed so that they do not emit the sound until that sound will arrive at our listening position at the same time as the speaker that is furthest away from us. By delaying the signal to the closer speakers, we correct the phase and timing errors, which prevents comb filtering and ensures a clear, accurate, and properly focused stereo image for the best listening experience. Now, so far, everything that I've covered is the way that I typically explain time alignment, and I always get that skepticism, Mark, still, we're so close to the speakers, there's no way that small difference even matters. But here is why it does. As an example here, let's consider a one kilohertz sine wave. This means a thousand cycles per second. One kilohertz is considered part of the mid-range frequency band and the human auditory system is highly sensitive to frequencies in and around this area. In fact, one kilohertz in particular is critical for speech intelligibility and clarity. Now here's the deal. In air, this wavelength, the actual distance of this wave is about 13 and a half inches. Now you may have noticed I've drawn two of the same one kilohertz wave right here. When these two waves arrive in time, in other words, at the same time, they build upon each other and perform as intended at our listening position. But let's say that this moves about half of that distance. Let's say that the speaker, the source of the sound is slightly different now. And let's say that it's, you know, it's only off by six and three quarters inches, which is half of this wavelength. Now we have a positive pressure and a negative pressure that are going to cancel each other out and we're going to have a null at this frequency at our listening position. So the next question here is, can we easily test this out? 
So let me explain first my test setup that I have for you guys. First off, we have the JL Audio Max measurement system here. Now typically when we're using the Max, we would use this total microphone array, which does a spatial average between these five microphones. But in this case here, we're going to be using just this single center microphone. Here on the table, we've got my portable car audio system. I did a full build actually about making this on the channel previously. I'm using a car audio head unit to power the these two component sets of speakers here. It's nice for, you know, just rocking out in the garage, but it also makes for a great testing environment. This particular head unit here, as you can see, gives us the ability to control time alignment, but right now we have everything essentially zeroed out. Even though it's set at a 25 inch value, all of the speakers are set at 25, which means there's no difference in the delay between any of them. For reference, I'm of course using the head unit to power this two-way component set, but right now we are running the head unit in network mode, which means it is actively powering the tweeters on individual channels and then actively powering the woofers on individual channels. Normally with a head unit, you have four channels, so you would have front left, front right, rear left, rear right, but in this case, we've gone front left tweeter, front right tweeter, front left woofer, front right woofer. And then finally here at my computer, we are running the JL Audio Tune software. This connects to the JL Audio Max measurement device and it's going to allow us to take some measurements here. We're going to be playing a one kilohertz test tone and that's of course going to come out through our woofer here. And for our first part of the experiment, I wanna make sure that we have an equal path length to the microphone. So this is about 21 and a half inches on this side. And then over here, maybe just a small adjustment. Let's double check again. 21 and a half, 21 and a half. So we have the same path length to each of the cones. So we are officially now ready to start our test. Let's play our one kilohertz test tone, which you guys can hear. And again, the measurement of course is going to pick up my voice. So I'm gonna be quiet for a second here and capture this measurement. So our initial trace here is in yellow. I made it yellow so that you guys could easily see it. And if we look at that value right at the top of the peak there, we've got about 85 dB. Now what I need to do is move the microphone and my goal is to have a path length difference of six and three quarters of an inch. Now you would think that I could just slide it this way, six and three quarters of an inch, but just the way the geometry works out with this being a triangle, it's not that easy. So I'm gonna do some measurements here until I come up with that difference. I think I've got it here, taking our measurement to the left woofer, that's about 23 inches to the tip of the microphone, which means I need this to be about 16 and a quarter, which it is. Now this is super critical. I haven't changed the volume level on the head unit at all. All I've done is hit pause. We're now going to resume and take another measurement. Let's capture this trace. So here is our second measurement with the microphone moved and having an unequal path length to our listening position. And this measurement is in this light blue color. And let's see if you remember before on the yellow measurement, it was 85 dB. Now we are measuring 62 dB. This is obviously a huge difference, 23 dB down. And that's because we are canceling out that frequency between the two different drivers at that position. Now it just occurred to me that I slid the microphone over to the right. So let's just pretend we're in a European right-hand drive vehicle. Obviously this would apply no matter which way we move the microphone, but let's find out, can we correct for this with time alignment? Now remember what I had on the head unit before, it was 25 for each of these. And since it's the same across the board, that means everything is going to be perfectly in time. It could have been zero inches for each of these and it wouldn't have mattered. But we're going to measure again to the center of the dust cap here. I wanna remind myself what each of these values is. And just so you guys know, I currently don't even have the tweeters playing. I only have the woofers playing. So the woofer on the left is 23 inches. So I'm gonna input that. And then our woofer on the right is that 16 and a quarter. On this head unit here, we can only go by inches, which of course is one of the advantages of having a true DSP as part of your system. Head units are very limited in their DSP capability, but we're gonna change this to 16 inches. And now let's test again. 
So our third trace I've captured here, in this case, I've captured it in red. And you can see that with that correction on the head unit for time alignment, we now have good summation once again at that frequency. Now it is worth noting that we actually have a little bit more output. We've gone from 85 up to 88 dB. And I would assume that this is because we're a little bit closer to the right hand side speaker. Again, this is why it's valuable to have a DSP where we can obviously control the output level of each of the channels individually as well. Now I know what you're thinking though, music is obviously just more than one note. Music has a bunch of different frequencies that are being played all at once. So can we evaluate and test that as well? So to do this part of the test, we can't necessarily play music because music isn't constant, but what is constant is pink noise. It sounds like this. Now I do wanna point out that we are not in an anechoic testing chamber right now, which means there would be no echoes. We're obviously in my shop that has a ton of reflective surfaces, but honestly, that's the same kind of environment that you're going to have in a vehicle. So maybe this is actually more of a real world test to prove the value of time alignment or time delay. To set up this test, I'm going to once again, make sure that my measurement microphone is centered between the drivers. So about 20 and a half on each of those and then same measurement to each of our tweeters. Now in this video clip here, I am actually playing pink noise currently. You can't hear it because this is just a voiceover, but you can see that even my body moving around near the microphones does have an impact on the actual measurement. So again, this is not a perfect measurement environment, but I still think we're going to be able to measure a difference that we can correct for with time alignment. Let's capture our first measurement here. So for the first measurement here, we will once again do this bright yellow. And now that we have our initial measurement, we're going to simulate what happens when we don't have those equal path lengths. We're going to put ourselves in the driver's seat of the vehicle here. Now I do wanna point out that this is actually a pretty small scale test. I'd estimate that I moved the microphone only about a foot here in total. So. As you can imagine, in vehicle, that difference from being perfectly in center of the speakers is even more, but I wonder if we can even measure a difference with this small change. So again, no changes to the volume level. Let's play our pink noise and capture another measurement. So here is our second measurement. Again, our second measurement, I've changed to this light blue color and let's evaluate the difference from our initial measurement. You're going to notice in the lower frequencies, Hardly any change at all. But if we think about that, that's actually because the lower frequencies have a longer wavelength, which means as we shift our listening position, the lower frequencies aren't going to be impacted as much with cancellations. Let's imagine a 250 hertz note. This has a wavelength that is much longer. It's actually more around 54 inches. So what this means, imagine that this wave is obviously much longer. So since we only moved 12 inches, it's only going to be a slight difference here, which means we're not going to have those cancellations in the pressure which sure enough, everything about 250 Hertz and below is essentially the same exact measurement. Now you may have noticed we do drop off at around 90 Hertz here, and that's because we don't have a subwoofer in this system. Now what about above 250 Hertz though? Man, here we have substantial differences. You can see a bunch of area of kind of a null here. You can see where we recorrect again, and then we get some massive peaks and valleys of interaction between the left and right side. And keep in mind that we're experiencing all these differences without any change to the equalization of our system. Can we correct these simply with time alignment? Really quick, a note from the editing bay here, a common mistake when tuning is to look at this change right here and immediately assume that, oh, I can just, you know, EQ this stuff out. I can bump it up here with equalization, but that doesn't actually work. That's because these are cancellations. So even if we do try to EQ increase the output here to get closer to a target curve, the cancellation just becomes stronger. That is why it's always a good idea to do time alignment before you EQ. And if you are ever adjusting your EQ and not seeing a change on your measurement, you may have a time or phase related issue. All right, back to the test. Let's see if we can fix this with time alignment. So of course, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to measure from the center of each driver to the tip of our microphone or 
in this case, the center of our listening position, and I'm going to input each of these values into my digital signal processor. Normally, in this case, we're gonna do it here on the head unit. So about 26 inches there, about 24 inches on that, 18 inches since we're obviously closer to this side, and then finally, this one, also about 18 inches. It's about 17 and a half, and I can only do inch increments here. Let's just go with 17. We've made our correction here with time alignment. Let's test it. So here we have that third trace, in this case again, for the third measurement, our final correction measurement. I went with the red color here. And let's look at that 250 hertz and above. As you can see, in comparison to the yellow measurement, which is our original, once again, we have excellent summation and we are in time virtually matching that original measurement at our new listening position. Now, just for a quick reference also, some of you guys may be thinking, okay, that's just a small change. That doesn't really matter. That doesn't look like that much of a change at all. But let's just pick an average area here on our corrected value. So that's about 74 dB at 917 Hertz versus 69 dB on our pre-corrected measurement. Nearly a 5 dB change right there, which is definitely audible to our ears, and honestly, not the worst overall change. Now, the same is the case for this range here. As you can imagine, as we get into the high frequencies, the time alignment can be even more absolutely critical because now our wavelengths are just so short that even a small change can have an impact so you'll notice in some areas, like right here, we don't have as drastic of a dip as we did before our time alignment. Our original measurement with the yellow more closely matches the final measurement after correction with the red. But something interesting you will notice is, again, our original measurement in the yellow right here is actually quite a bit different than both the moved measurement and the corrected measurement in this case right here. What I believe is actually happening right here is this is more of a reflection that is occurring in our environment, our listening environment. And this is why it's important to have all the different aspects of a DSP for tuning, because this is something that we would likely want to correct more with our equalization. If you guys have more input on what you think this area here is though, definitely let me know. Now I know that the follow-up question that a lot of you guys are gonna have is, you know, what about the passenger listening position? If we're correcting only for one listening position, obviously we are potentially messing things up for another. This is where you may want to consider having multiple different DSP tunes based on how many people are listening in the vehicle. But with that said, there are some unique techniques that you can use in tuning with phase in order to have a great sounding two seat vehicle. Something we can definitely cover more in the future if you guys are interested. Overall, this small test shows us how time alignment is critical for improving the performance of our aftermarket car audio system, along with all of the other tools that a digital signal processor gives us. And keep in mind, in our test here, this was done on a small scale where we didn't really move the measurement microphone that far at all, and we were able to measure quite a considerable change. Now, don't forget when you're looking to pick out speakers for your next car audio project, you can find out exactly Exactly what sizes fit in your vehicle with our show sponsor Crutchfield and you could also potentially save on a qualifying purchase with the links down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible and thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching.